Hello, welcome to uh, another one of my uh, PHP programming tours. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the new uh, MySQL I, well, the newer MySQL I, uh, it stands for MySQL Improved uh, functionality. Uh, I'm going to be using the object oriented implementation of the class. Um, so it works a bit differently to the normal MySQL functions. Uh, the way, I, the reason I thought I should um, do this tutorial is because in the latest versions of PHP, MySQL I, uh, MySQL is going to be deprecated and eventually removed. So it's important that, um, basically, it's important that you start using either PDO or MySQL I to connect to a database. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up NetBeans. Load up, and we're going to open up our ZAMP control panel. And we're going to start Apache and MySQL. I'll be using the same base that I used in my original MySQL functions tutorial. Um, I'll also put a link on this video of the MySQL functions original, so you can see the differences between the two. Uh, okay, so last time I was working in the last tour, I was working on a login system. I've just um, AJAX actually. I've put that all in a folder here called login sys. So if you haven't already, go to File, Open Recent Project, or Open Project, and find my first project, which is what we've been working on. I've already got it open, so it's not my list. So once I've opened this file, we're going to right-click on Source Files here, and go New, and PHP File. I'm going to have index.php. In fact, that was wrong of me. I didn't need to put .php, so now it's going to be called .php. Oh, no. I thought it would be called .php .php, but it isn't. It's fine. And I'm also going to create another file called config. Okay, um, we're going to we're going to set some variables here, uh, similar to how I did in the normal MySQL tutorial. So I'm going to have DB host, and that is going to be localhost, because it's it's referencing the database host on my local computer. So I can put localhost here. I could also put one two seven dot zero dot zero to one, but we're not going to. So localhost. It means the same thing. Um, DB user is uh, root. This is just for local database. And DB pass is blank. This is the default uh, set, uh, set of credentials when you install XAMPP. And database. Now, if I open up my Google Chrome, uh, where are we? Host. Okay, what is that? It is called test one, I believe the database is called. Okay, yeah. Database called test one, so db name calls test one. Okay. Ooh, what have I done? Just got rid of it. Don't worry. Okay. Once I've set up those credentials, what I'm going to do is uh, connect to the database. Okay, so MySQL I is uh, class-based. Uh, well, well, sorry, it's um, object-oriented. Well, you can also use it in a procedural style, the same way as MySQL, uh, the normal MySQL functions work. But it is better to get in the habit of using it in an object-oriented way, in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new uh, MySQL class uh, object. It's going I'm just going to call it MySQL. So MySQL equals uh, and then I type in here my SQL and NetBeans very helpful as it is will um, show up. Now it's uh, no sorry equals new my SQL I. Okay. Now I need to give my SQL I some parameters, and the parameters I need to give it are if I just um, check the uh, yeah sorry. The parameters I need to give it are database host, I believe, so db host, db user, db pass, and db name. You don't actually need to provide it with db name, it just um, sets it up for referencing, when you do a query, it will set it up so it references a database automatically of db, uh, db name. Um, okay, so once set it up, we are going to connect to the database. So, uh, sorry, no, we've already connected to the database. We're going to check if it managed to connect successfully, that's what we're going to do. So, if statement here, if MySQL, uh, and then uh, the, way, the way we reference um, objects in a, um, a method in a class, 
uh, in an object is we use um, hyphen and then right arrow and uh, we're going to have here we're going to use error so if uh, no sorry just connect underscore no, connect error so if MySQL connect error so if there's been an error when connecting we're going to output there was a connection error so error do a bit of h, uh, HTML to make this bit output nicer error uh, and then put in here we can put the error number so we can reference MySQL error uh, connect error error no that's the error number <coughs> And here we can have the actual error. So let's go error uh, connect error. So if we fail to connect, uh, in fact, I'll put a die here. So if we fail to connect, uh, it's going to kill the script and it's going to output what the error was. And if it, if we did manage to connect successfully, it, I'm going to um, just output here print uh, strong successfully connected to the database strong like that okay so now if it can if it if it found an if it got an error when trying to connect to the database then it will output the error message and the error number uh, if it didn't have a connection error then it will output that it successfully connected to the database okay so now I'm gonna open up the index file and I'm going to uh, require that file. Uh, yeah, require that file. So dot slash config dot php. So it knows it's in the same fo uh, directory using dot slash. So that will try to require config dot php. So now, if we load up web browser and I go localhost slash my first project, successfully connect to the database. So what it's done is it's opened up the index file. The index file has required the config file, and we've opened up a new MySQL I uh, object, which created a new MySQL object, and we checked if there's any errors when connecting, and there was not, so that's all good. Uh, right, Team Street just crashed. Okay, that's cool. Doesn't matter. Um, I'm just going to put some new lines between uh, that message. Okay, so. I'm going to follow the same sort of um, line of for and uh, of what I did in the last uh, in my other MySQL tutorial, which was using the default MySQL functions. So here I'm going to have a look at the database format. Okay, so I can look at now and I see we have active users and users. So I want to list some information from the users table. The way I do this in MySQL I is I need to query the database. So I'm going to write a query that's going to be like this MySQL, because we have the MySQL object which is started here, it's created here. So we now have that for use in this file because we've required the config. So MySQL query, and here we're going to type in the query. It says it's uninitialized, this is a NetBeans warning because it doesn't know what's in this file. It's not clever enough at the moment to work that out so but it, it should work um, so I'm gonna say it's this is exactly the same there's no difference in the SQL syntax at all so you can type how you do normally in normal MySQL functions so select and I'm gonna see what rows uh, columns sorry I want to select well, I just did that so what columns I want to select here so I'm gonna select email and name Okay, so select email name from users. I think it's called users. Yes, it is called users. So email name from users. Uh, yeah, um, and that's it. I'm just going to select everything. Okay, uh, the way I can use this query is by say uh, I need to assign a variable to the what the result of this. So I'm going to call this result equals MySQL query select blah blah blah. Now the way I'm going to loop through this is rather similar to the way you do it in uh, normal MySQL. So I'm going to say uh, I'm going to make a while loop like this while 
it's going to be so while row equals uh, and this is how we do it MySQL oh, sorry I did it wrong result fetch a sock like that while row equals result fetch a sock and then I should be able to output here so I'm going to output like this I'm going to have uh, email on the no on the right side yeah okay so I'm going to print it like this I'm just going to create an uh, variable here step a variable that's going to be one uh, I is going to increment here I plus plus okay um, so what I'm going to have here is print so I'm going to print first of all I'm going to output I I'm then going to put a bracket like that I'm going to make that strong as well so it's bold So this is the element number. I could also use the ID. I could select ID instead and use that. I can wait, isn't here, but I'm just going to do it in the code instead. Uh, so, okay, so that's a number, and here we're going to have the email, note the name, and then I'm going to output the uh, email address in brackets. No, in square brackets, for the sake of it. That and row email should go here. And new line tags, HTML, like, like so. So this should now uh, query the database. It gets the result of the query, which will be the set of the result set. There is a set of uh, rows returned. And then I'm going to loop through each fetch a sock of the results. So each I'm looping through every row of the results that are returned and I'm then outputting it here. So if I switch here and refresh the page, there you go. It's now listed Eddie, Eddie Ian Creations .uk, and Donald, Donald at gmail .com. Uh, And that is what's in here. Um, so yeah, this has just been a very uh, simple tutorial as to how to use the, um, how. Uh, basically, it's just a mirror of my m uh, n normal MySQL tutorial and how to do it in MySQL I, MySQL Improved. Um, as I say, it's a good idea that if you are uh, creating some scripts in PHP that you start to switch over to either MySQL I or PDO. I'll put up links to documentation on them uh, on the uh, PHP website. Because, as I say, P uh, the normal default MySQL functions are being deprecated, uh, which means they advise not using them anymore, and eventually they are going to be removed from future versions of PHP. So, steps to do this are you uh, set up DB host, a uh, variable to store users. You don't have to put this in variables, you could just put it as string straight in here. Uh, this part is very similar to normal MySQL. You then instantiate a, a MySQL I object. Um, using this format, so th this variable here could be anything, could be, you know, MySQL I or whatever, as long as you use it throughout. So MySQL equals new MySQL I, DB host, DB user, DB pass, DB name. Um, if there's a connection error, we then output the error. Otherwise, print successfully connect the database. If we were printing this li if we we're putting this live with some useful code, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, we'd just get rid of that because it doesn't help anyone. It, we don't need to know it. A user wouldn't know it, need to know it's successfully connected, but a user might need to know that there's been a problem, so we can leave the error in. Um, and then we require the config page on the index page. That then does all this code here. It connects the database, creates the MySQL object, and we then result uh, stores the result of that query. We then loop through every result and output it. That is very simply what we are doing here. So I hope this tutorial has um, helped anyone that's maybe, you know, thought about using MySQL I, not really understood what it is, not understood how to use it. So I hope it's been some help, and uh, look forward to doing another tutorial soon. Thank you.